Good afternoon, everybody Uneducated Economist here. So I got a couple of articles I want to share with you guys. Uh, pretty interesting. These articles seem contradictory to each other, but really when you read them and you think about it, they really are saying somewhat of the same thing. Now, one of the articles is talking about the dollar dominance, right? How strong the dollar is as a world reserve currency. And they give examples of how other currencies are taking the place of the dollar as far as the reserve status goes. And they go on also to talk about how the availability of doing transactions in these other currencies are becoming a lot cheaper and more efficient than the US dollar is. It's not going to take over as the world reserve currency. No other nation, no other currency is going to beat the dollar. And the main reason is, is that there is no other nation out there that is willing to do what the United States has done. The United States has taken on a huge amount of debt. They have issued out an insane amount of U.S. treasuries. There is no other nation out there who has gone into debt as much as the United States has. That has provided the world with a safe, liquid collateral, the U.S. Treasuries. There is no other nation out there who is willing to take on the sheer amount of deficit trading that the United States has done in order to supply the world with enough dollars to do the world trade. So those are two things that no other nation is even remotely close to doing that would need to be done in order to be considered a status or a re world reserve currency status is that you have to have those two things that huge debt market and enough deficit trading so that you can supply the world with the dollars and no other nation is going to touch that none now yes you are going to find where some nations are going to do transactions in their local currencies china and russia might do oil deals with each other india and china might do deals with each other and they might do it in their sovereign currencies. However, if you are going to go and do world trade on a regular basis with all nations around the world, you are going to find where the dollar is the only thing that's really going to work. There is no other nation that is going to provide that much currency for the people to use. It's just the way it is. Now, a lot of people might say, well, they'll just switch. Something else will work. A cryptocurrency, digital currency. That's fine. Yeah, something like that will take over. I am so much in agreement on that. The dollar will lose its world reserve currency status at some point in the future. But that's not going to happen tomorrow. And it's not going to happen the next day. And if you go and look at some of the contracts that have been written around the world, like Russia and China and Sri Lanka, and you see all these places who are going into default, what is it that they want? Dollars. They don't want anything else. They want the dollars. They issued out debt in dollars, and they're due in dollars. And the people who have purchased that debt, who bought the Russian bonds, who bought the Sri Lankan bonds, who bought the Evergrande bonds from China, all those people, they want to be paid in dollars, and they're expecting to get paid in dollars. Now, when you start thinking about that and those contracts, those are IOUs. And those IOUs get used as if they're dollars. They're not even dollars. Like, they don't have anything to do with the United States. Doesn't have anything to do with, the, with our corporations. Doesn't have anything to do with our government. Doesn't have anything to do with our central bank. But yet, they wrote out a contract sold it in dollars, it's due in dollars, and that contract gets used in world trade as if it was dollars. So think about how many dollars are actually in existence out there that are beyond what the Federal Reserve and the government even knows about. There's a shadow currency dominating this whole world of planet out there that nobody is even considering that if that starts going into default, how much demand for dollars will really be. Think about it. If all those contracts start to fail, all those people who bought those bonds, who bought all that defaulting debt, they want to be paid in dollars. You're expecting to be paid in dollars. Their portfolio says they hold these many dollars. But they don't really exist. They never did. Not, not ever. The dollars they gave up, they existed, right? Because they earned them. They put it out there for these bonds. But the bonds themselves, they're not guaranteed to pay. I mean, they're supposed to pay. You're hoping they pay, but you take on a lot of risk. 
And if they don't pay, the money vanishes. It's gone. Just think about that. That's where the dollar really gains its world reserve currency from, is that there is such a high demand for these things way beyond just what the central banks know about. And again, that's not about ready to change. So let's look over like what's going on in the United States. Because right now, the United States is going into something called quantitative tightening, where they're not going to be providing as many dollars into the system. There's going to be a liquidity tightening taking place. All those bonds that were written out there in U.S. dollars, all those corporations, all those sovereign nations, they're going to be scrambling for dollars. They're going to be looking for them. And if they can't find them, well, they're going to have to put something on their balance sheets. They're going to have to hold some sort of reserve. So if they can't get the dollars, they're going to hold whatever they can. So it makes a lot of sense to me that when you have high dollar dominance, that you would see other reserves, other currencies landing as far as a reserve on these banks' balance sheets. Don't think it's because they don't want the dollars anymore. It's because they can't get them. It's because they're being used for something else. It's because they need finding something cheaper out there. When you think about it, as the dollar continues to grow stronger, I mean, you buy low, sell high. Do you want to buy something that's strong? And expensive, or do you want to buy something that's cheap? So, if you're a central bank who is at least somewhat of aware of the dollar strengthening, well, you may not want to get into the dollars when it's strong. You want to get into the dollars when they're weak. You get into weaker currencies and hoping they strengthen up. So that's that's probably the biggest thing that I see going on out there. Every time you find an article that says, look, they're getting rid of their dollars. They don't want the dollars anymore. This country's selling off all their U.S. treasuries. No, they're trying to get the cash. They need the cash, and there's no other, There's no easier way to get cash than to sell your U.S. treasuries. It's the fastest way to cash you can get. And then if cash is hard to get, and it's expensive, and it's strong, then you're going to find another currency to use. And that's what's going on. Look over at the other article. Right now, there is record amounts of demand for U.S. treasuries. Right? The, the, the investors are dying for a place to put their cash and they want those U.S. treasuries and the treasuries over there going, we're not going to issue out as much of this stuff, right? We're not going to issue out as much treasuries or bonds for you to buy. Well, that creates a demand for it. And if there's a demand for it, the price goes up and the interest rates go down. Well, that's a nice spot for the Federal Reserve to be in considering that they're wanting to sell their U.S. treasuries off. Right? They want to unload their balance sheet. They want to go into that quantitative tightening. Well, if they start selling their U.S. treasuries, and they don't even have to sell them. They're just going to let them naturally just mature, right? You know, these things are, it's like a loan like any other. Once they come due, the loan gets paid. If the Federal Reserve takes that money back and doesn't roll it over into a new treasury, that money's destroyed. That's liquidity tightening taking place. That's deflation. Like a lot of people don't want to look at like, the expansion of money and credit as the real inflation deflationary scenario. But that's really what it is. The prices are the results of that. So right now, the Federal Reserve is going into a deflationary scenario. They want to start constricting the money supply. They want to start tightening things up. And it's going to happen. And as they go to do it, as the Federal Reserve goes to pull that money back in, the Treasury is not going to issue out as much debt, and they are going to unload that balance sheet. And by doing that, they're going to keep the interest rates low and the demand for the Treasury is high. A lot of people said this wasn't going to happen, that they were going to blow the whole system up. It's going to get difficult out there. If you have massive amounts of debt and you are at the end of your limit right now, you better do something about your about your situation. You got to get out of debt or you got to lower your bill, your living expenses and you better do it hurry like now. Because you're coming you're going to come into a point here very soon where where everybody's going to find themselves suddenly in debt saturation. See, like, think about it like this. Say you have, say you have like a $2,000 a month income. And $500 of that goes to paying your credit card. The other $1,500, or say $1,300 of it goes to living expenses. Gives you $200 to mess around with at the end of the month. Energy cost goes up, food cost goes up, pretty soon your $200 that you had at the end of the month is gone, right? You can't, it goes into your living expenses now. All of a sudden, your $2,000 meets your requirements. Then, 
you're at debt saturation because you can't take on any more debt. See, before you had a little room, you could take on a little bit of debt. You had that $200, so you could say take on another $200 worth of debt every month. But once the living expenses has increased, it meets your debt burden, all of a sudden you're at debt saturation. You can't take on any more debt. That means no cars, no houses, no anything else. Just work harder for less. And that's what you can expect. You know, right now, if you are not out of debt or at least have a, a serious drop in your living expenses, you're going to you're going to start suffering into some serious pain going into the future because the cost of living is going to get very, very expensive. Okay. Uneducated economists, you guys let me know.